Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the third and final episode in our uh, Round the Boutiques trip of Watches and Wonders. Um, first of all, we want to say a big thank you to Panerai for letting us come uh, and hosting us at their stand. Um, really nice to see their pieces and our pieces all getting all cosy together and, uh, and playing nice. <laughs> Uh, and we wouldn't have been able to come without them, so thank you very much. Um, the first brand we saw today, uh, we saw some of the, the more unusual brands, was Rebellion. Uh, was race... that today? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> uh, race race car team turned watchmaker. Oh yeah, they had a big race car in their booth. They did, they did. Um, I very much wanted to sit in it, but I was too afraid to ask. <laughs> Uh, they had they had a few pieces this year, but a couple really stood out um, for a, for a number of unexpected and interesting reasons. The T five hundred with the winding crank. Oh yeah, like the um, I mean, it's not a very flattering analogy, but it reminded me of a bicycle foot pump. <laughs> yeah, or an airplane seat belt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this this watch had uh, five hundred hours of power reserve, I believe. And to wind all of those uh, barrels would require an enormous amount of torque through a crown, which would just be impossible. So it had a lever, much like the bicycle pump that you described. Yeah, you had to pump it. Yeah, pump it real good. And the byproduct of that is it's very, very satisfying. It's a yeah. bit of a, of a fidget spinner type of effect. Yeah. Uh, and I can imagine you just sitting in a meeting going... Z -z 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 -z. <laughs> Yeah, and I think they had some sort of lever release or something, so you couldn't overwind it, so you could just pump it all day. Yeah. Um, uh, the other the other watch they had that was very unusual was the uh, Weep One by Axial. Don't ask me what they mean. W E A P. <laughs> um, not sure about the name. Such a strange looking watch. It was like if you imagine a sci-fi capsule that would usually house some energon. Yeah. But instead of the Energon inside, it was a floating, flying tourbillon yeah. spinning around. Double axis tourbillon, ready to slot into the nearest droid to send off to the <laughs> uh, the, the planet desert planet below. Yeah. To supply the secrets to the enemies. Um, the crazy thing, crazy thing. Absolutely bonkers. Um, not the most comfortable, but I wouldn't imagine that that's that's what they're aiming for but some secret source going on in there to get the axles turning in the directions you wouldn't necessarily expect. But, I mean, you just look at the pictures and you go, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, really innovative idea there. Great to see. I would have called it precious cargo. Yeah. <laughs> Test tube. <laughs> uh, on to another uh, crazy, crazy watchmaker, Ferdinand Bertou, with the chronometer FB2RSM. Not uh, exactly the most emotively inspiring of names, but very much in the vein of the brand. They make 30 watches a year. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. They it spend, was, yeah, exquisite. They spend 250 hours finishing each one. Mm, yeah. So refined, um, yeah, exquisite detail. It just felt like um, each one was kind of like a masterpiece, really. Yeah, Langer up to 11, if you can imagine such a thing. Yeah. Uh, and this particular watch had uh, two RSM, the SM standing for second mort, dead seconds. It had a deadbeat second. So, you know, when you spend a hell of a lot of money to have a watch that ticks like a quartz. Um, but, you know, inspiring design, really great brand ethos. Uh, we'd love to go and see how they do their work. Not mm -hmm. sure we've got 250 hours to spend watching them do it. <laughs> but um, really great to see that for the first time Yeah. in our hands. Yeah, cool one. Another one, uh, Cyrus. Still, this is the first time I've seen them as well. Uh, and they were presenting the Klepsis Dice. Uh, unusual name. Perhaps you'd expect to hear a doctor say it rather than a watchmaker. <laughs> I'm afraid your dice have Klepsis. They'll never roll again. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I can still gamble, right? <laughs> They're making just 10 of these, and their thing, their, their whole thing is double crowns, left and right. Yeah. Like little ears. Dual chronographs. Dual chronographs. It kind of tickled me a bit because it's just like, I couldn't believe how much new stuff everyone was coming up with. Yep. They keep just finding stuff to do that hasn't been done before. Yeah, so 
two chronograph hands whizzing round in tandem was awesome. Yeah, I, I heard once that David Bowie used to write his songs by tearing up a dictionary full of words and fishing them out one by one. Uh, right, yeah. And I think that's how the watchmakers are doing it. They tear up complications <laughs> and pull them out. Chronograph and two. <laughs> yeah, I pulled out chronograph again. Oh, <laughs> do what the bag says. Yeah. So this watch had two chronographs, um, which operate exactly as you'd expect it to, with a mono pusher on the left crown and a mono pusher on the right. But they were offset, so one starts at the bottom and the other starts at the top. And the real trick is pressing them both at the same time. So the chronograph second hands uh, run in uh, in opposites, in, yeah. in polar opposites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know you guys love your soft drink analogies, and it had a Ooh. really beautiful sprite coloration. Oh, I could kill for a sprite right now. Steve Owen impression for you. <laughs> God rest his soul. Timely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, crammed two chronograph movements in there um, with the suggestion that there may be a flyback version in the future. Mm. I've got quite good at saying things that I think might happen and reading responses. Put it this way, the people who make these watches aren't very good at playing poker. Yeah, when they stare at you sort of blankly and then grin you kind of <laughs> realise you might be onto the right track yeah a lot of Cheshire cats uh, at the show today uh, how about probably the uh, most audacious visual experience of the entire show I think you know what I'm talking about <laughs> Roger Dubois. Oh, so funny. So um, IWC are boasting a uh, unique composition by um, Hans Zimmer for them. And, yeah. uh, sort of Hans Zimmer experience going on. But Roger Dubois had Hans Zimmer um, playing a flaming piano on the beach. It was like a... <laughs> It was like a nightclub in there. It was scaffolding and screens everywhere. It was like a Puff Daddy video. Um, so much so that the um, actual presentation that they gave um, for their, their one watch that they were, their one novelty they were showing was, um, you, they, you were handed out earpieces so you could hear what the uh, exhibitor was saying and she was speaking through a, a mic and you had to listen to it on an earpiece because it was booming. Um, and yeah, they were talking about the uh, Knights of the Round Table. Yeah, watch. they were. Put together by a watchmaker who was on high in a tiny little booth, oh, yeah. right at the very top. <laughs> I'm assuming he kept distracting the rest of the class and had to be moved to solitary. Yeah. Um, I mean, words can't describe it. You'll see. You'll see it in front of you now. Uh, bonkers, and as as was the Knights of the Round Table MT. Uh, my favourite thing ever. Um, such a cool watch. Only eight of them made, though, unfortunately, and they've all been snapped up. So I don't know what they were doing there, just showing off. Um, but uh, yeah, so you had all your favourite Knights of the Round in gold around the um, peripheral of the dial. Uh, all your favourite ones there, Badly Strong John and uh, Zuma Croom and... Sleepy. Yeah, Stretchy Boy Slim and all those guys. I, you, know, you, you know all the Knights of the Round table, don't you? Long, long man. Yeah. <laughs> Acer, snakes. Um <laughs> Mr. Love Fingers. I'm so tired. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so, um, yeah, it's a bonkers piece, a tourbillon in the middle, and then um, these sort of sapphire blocks of, uh, I, I can't I want to say, like, Milano glass or something. Oh, Murano glass. Murano yeah. glass, yeah, yeah, really exquisite glass. Um, and then, and the coolest thing I liked was the, so the crown and the crown guards almost look like the um, sort of cross guard of a sword, mm. like Excalibur had, been, Excalibur had been thrust into the side of the watch and then the handle kind of broken off and that was the, the crown. So yeah, really, really cool. Um, I didn't get very good footage of it because it was obviously, it was kicking off in there every 10 seconds with strobing lights and and, <laughs> and rave music. So, um, but yeah, the press images are amazing and it's such an amazing watch. Yeah, so apologies that you just had to watch a load of rubbish footage over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been thing... a long two weeks. I mean, <laughs> three days. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've been in the Truman Show for a while now. The uh, the other thing about this watch, uh, there are markers in there set behind all the Murano glass. You can barely read them and the brand have said they don't care. Oh, that's yeah, that's funny as well. That's, yeah, they said, you know, this is just supposed to be fun. It's not about telling the time. Um, which brings us on to Van Cleef and Arbels. <laughs> yeah, it certainly does. Perhaps the surprise highlight of the trip. I was really flagging. I was really tired and um, ha um, went into this, this appointment with Van Cleef and Arbels and I came out beaming. It was so much fun. Compared with, with the booth, the decoration they had there and with the things they had on show and just how visually impressive they were. I don't know if it's because I was tired and delirious, Yeah. but the whole thing was like walking into a waking dream. Yeah, it did take me back to when I was a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so the pieces I saw, um, two watches, uh, one with a uh, beautiful flowery dial, and uh, I was given a little test actually by um, the uh, Van Cleef and Arpels representative, and he said, can you tell me the time? Can you tell the time by counting the amount of open flowers? And uh, I was like, uh, five? And he was like, no, it's four. Oh no, wait, it's five. One, what time is it? Five? I see four. I oh, know five. Sorry. <laughs> um, so it was really tricky, but um, it looked stunning. And and when you when when the the time ticked over to the next the uh, next hour, so it went, when it went from five to six, all the open flowers was closed, and then they would open up again with an extra one. It was amazing. Um, and then there was also a uh, one that featured a ballerina. And if you wanted to know the time, you asked to the ballerina by pushing a pusher on the side. And her the butterfly wings of her uh, sort of tutu would rise up and and become butterfly wings, and they would point to the time. Um, yeah, really stunning, really cool, playful watches. There you go, upskirt watch. <laughs> Um, and the automata they had. Don't uh, ruin it. <laughs> the machines they had out in the showroom. Um, I mean, you'll see the footage. They have to be seen in person, really, to be believed. But we spoke to the head of design and the head of uh, technical development. Two of the most passionate people you could possibly meet. I, I walked in there being like, yeah, girl stuff. Yeah, jewellery guys. Yeah, but no. oh, they blew my mind. No. The, the mechanisms to make these things work developed for one piece each yeah. um, in a prototypical way of just constant testing and evolving, built modularly so they can work on them. Very, very small teams. I think the Planetarium, they were saying, were three people working on it right, yeah, yeah. at Van Cleef. And, um, I mean, the, the bird in the bird bath, bellows that played through whistles to make the sounds mm. of the motion, the waves, the way they moved against each other. On yeah, a, yeah, a, 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 presumably a, a, a dragonfly fluttering over the surface of the water. Yeah, they had the, the flower that opened in three sections, which gave it this really organic wave, and then a little bird with a, a drop of nectar uh, hanging from its beak, and the, the planetarium. Um, all of the planets, well, some of the planets, they didn't have all of them for some reason, but just arranged like the watch they did, but arranged in a much larger scale. And uh, we were shown the the inside of it. Um, <laughs> some WhatsApp phone pictures from the guy who was who just finished assembling it the week before. Wow. Uh, who looked very tired. Yeah. <laughs> and this thing, because I said to him, oh, we've got more space, haven't you, than the watch? Much easier. And he said, Whoa. and showed me inside it. This thing was insane. Yeah. There was no space left, but everything was still decorated like a watch. Um, he said, actually, the, the technical guy, he came from... The moon. The, <laughs> I forget now, but one of those manufacturers uh, that does concept watch movements, I forget the name of it now. So he was really used to this idea of having a brief from a client that's crazy and conceptualising individual things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the biggest scale that he's done yet, and yeah. he absolutely nailed it. Yeah, I think that's the, the vibe I got from them. They just dream up stuff, like, what can we put on the dial, what can we do, and then they just go for it and figure it out. Uh, yeah, bonus piece of information, the design guy was wearing a langer. <laughs> so there you go. He I've was... probably got him in trouble now, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut that out. Uh, so Vacheron Constantin, people have been talking to us about them. We saw their overseas titanium uh, tourbillon, very nice piece, mm -hmm. um, expanding on the overseas collection. But that was not the star of the show. star of the show was the rebirth of the 222. Have you you've seen the two 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 before the original? Um, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, all I all I keep hearing is mutterings of the return of the two 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 two. That's uh, but I was just like, what is this? What is everyone going on about? Let What's me this? let me see it. <laughs> um, but it doesn't didn't disappoint. I was actually like, oh okay, yeah, I get it. It's it is almost um, pixel perfect to the original thirty seven millimeters. Yeah, all in gold, including the dial, brushed bracelet, feels. I don't want to say lower quality than what you expect from Vacheron, but it feels very different. It felt really classical to me. When I was yeah. handed it, I was just like, oh, where, where's this? Where, where have you dug this out from? Like, yeah. um, but it, um, as you know, I'm a puny wristed guy and um, it just felt really good. Was it 38 or? 37 mil, yeah. 37. Um, and it just fit wonderfully. And um, and the, the gold texture of the case and everything was... Smooth like butter. It looked really good on you. You look great in it. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. What are you up on? That's weird and frightening. <laughs> Why are you being nice? <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
And yeah, I asked, because the question I had in my mind was, okay, 222, that's come back. Mm -hmm. We obviously know why it's come back, because this is a very popular thing. And um, I mean, it's it's a complete no-brainer. But they still have the overseas. The explanation I got was um, heritage line, bringing right. back the 222. Sure. Contemporary line, that's the overseas. Yeah. So those two things will run parallel with each other. Sort of categorization thing. Yeah. They should speak to Seiko, they're good at that. Yeah, or maybe they'll do some sort of anime edition. <laughs> uh, but they, yeah, two, two, two. Hype is the hype is real. Hype is very well deserved. Sure, they should have done it a lot sooner. Now, uh, another unexpected turn of events. Cartier. They had a lot of pieces. We had to book a forty-five minute session just to go through all of them. Yeah, loads of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the kind of things you'd expect. Return of the crash. Um, the panther, double panther with a little bitey panther, which, uh, which bites onto the mm -hmm. bracelet. Yeah. But the, th the three that really caught my eye were the, uh, at this point, I don't remember their real names, the turny, the squishy, and the spinny. Yeah. So we'll start with the spinny. Mm -hmm. They uh, have the mysterious clocks. This has been a thing they've had for a very long time, where the hands float and you go, ooh, that's cool. Sure. Uh, imagine a watch where the hands floating is not the most incredible thing about it. Yeah. Imagine a rotor weight and just a rotor weight, the whole movement in the rotor weight. Mm. This is bonkers. Apparently eight years it took them to produce. Um, yeah, you have to keep very still if you want to read the time. <laughs> <laughs> like what, what did, what, what did they, how did they think of this? Did they, were they borrowing from the same bag of, of, of ideas that, that um, Cyrus were using? Rotor weight? All of the movement. Yeah, or, or Ulysse Nardin with their freak where the movement is the, the yeah. hands and stuff and they were like, oh, that's cool, but would it be more fun if it span wildly? <laughs> <laughs> and it did spin wildly. Very, very interesting, really cool and great to see that Cartier doesn't just focus on um, high jewellery pieces and still has that innovation in mind when it comes to mechanicals. Mm. Uh, then we had the tourney, which is a... Uh, all, I, all I can describe it as is a Toblerone for the wrist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, like the watches of old, the ladies' watches of old, when they were called wristlets, you have a watch face on one side, but you can rotate it to have three different faces. And it had a very satisfying springy snick snack. Mm. Snick snack to go around. Do you remember when you used to get two strips of paper and you would lie them on top of each other at 90 degrees and then fold one and then the other and then the other and you create that expanding spring? Absolutely not. Oh. Oh, you must have gone to a different school than I. <laughs> um, but the mechanism was very similar to that. It had a real... I think they've been doing a lot of stuff with 3D printing. So mm. they know exactly how to make these um, flexible mechanisms, which is actually a really, really modern thing, but used to great effect for a, a classical piece. And then my my favourite one was the, the squishy. Yeah. Imagine a watch... They talk about cushion case. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine a watch that's also a marshmallow. Yeah. This thing, again, 3D printed mesh with set with diamonds, watch case, uh, watch face in the front, but it's actually squishy. Mm. Physically squishy. It, it bounces like a little pillow. That's what it was. Bananas. Yeah. Great stuff. Um, really good to see. You sometimes hear people saying, oh, Cartier, they just do jewellery watches for, for, the, for the ladies. No, they're one of the big boys. And... It was clear to see their booth, well, you say booth, but they practically built a hotel. They, yeah. They had uh, bellboys and everything. It was crazy. I did get lost in there for a brief period. Yeah, yeah. I had I'll to ask my way out. <laughs> um, I'm going to open a, open the door on Jack Nicholson in a minute. <laughs> um, yeah. And that really wraps up everything that we saw at Watches and Wonders. Um what was your highlight? Your one highlight of the whole show? Um, it's funny. It was the first thing we saw, but um, that Grand Seiko Coda um, Constant Force Tourbillon keeps keeps springing to the front of my mind. Yeah. Well, that will save some time because very much agreed. <laughs> A lot of great pieces, but that was... If there was one piece I could take away with me, Yeah. it would absolutely be that. Yeah. It was a hell of a trip. It was so much fun. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Everyone was so nice really great atmosphere great environment um yeah really cool yeah if you get start start get yourself a watch blog and uh get yourself a press pass for next year if you can <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Um, and it was also great to meet all of the other uh, influencers and YouTubers and, and general fans. We have fans. Yeah, crazy. That's, that's yeah. Bananas. yeah, it was really nice meeting all of you. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for your uh, kind words and uh, your, your friendliness. And uh, we didn't get punched by anyone, which is... No, I was absolutely blown away that yeah. we didn't get heckled. Uh, last little piece of surprising news for you. 41mm Tiffany Blue Oyster Perpetual discontinued. Uh, what's this about? Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, goodbye. Goodbye. How you will be missed. Goodbye, Tiffany Blue Oyster Perpetual. Goodbye, Watchers and Wonders. Uh, and thank you again to Panerai for hosting us. See you all next year. Bye.